Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today, Wednesday, July 11th, 2012. All right, so we're gonna cover the economy in this along with eugenics, which is a indirect result of the economic warfare being carried out against the entire planet by a select few of douchebags. Spain rolls out painful new austerity measures. Austerity was one of the most searched words, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago. Uh, for a reason. It's called poverty, and they want you to get used to it. And it says here, taxes raised, benefits cut. So Spanish police are clashing with minors opposing austerity measures, and not just minors, it's all sorts of different people. So it says here, um, police fired rubber bullets to disperse protesters in central Madrid on Wednesday. At least 23 demonstrators have been injured during the clashes. It says here, the miners are angry with the 63% cut in subsidies to coal mining companies. It goes on and it says here that earlier in the day, tens of thousands of Spaniards joined miners to express opposition to the austerity measures. The miners believe the government should follow the agreement signed by the former socialist government, which aimed to reduce the subsidies by only 10% in 2013. Anti-immigrant violence surges in Greece. Police accused of looking the other way as Golden Dawn attacks. Violence against legal and illegal immigrants has surged to alarming proportions as Greece suffers through one of its worst economic contractions since the Great Depression. Well, I guess you can call it that. The far-right Golden Dawn Party made huge gains in the country's recent elections, and its supporters who have vowed to rid the land of filth has stepped up attacks on immigrants' homes and businesses. So, And there's a kind of an interesting connection, because here in the United States, um, our government doesn't give a crap about immigration or borders or either, so you'll actually find uh, similar parties, National Socialist parties on the borders, uh, supposedly police in the borders, right? It's usually PR stunts, but it says here, closure of border patrol stations across four states trigger alarm. The Obama regime is moving to shut down nine border patrol stations across four states, triggering a backlash from local law enforcement members, of Congress, and border patrol agents themselves. Then we have bailed out behemoth HSBC to apologize, I apologize, at U.S. Senate hearing for terrorist money laundering. Anyone remember how many billions HSBC, Europe's largest beggar bank, borrowed secretly from the uh, Bernanke or Bernanke at 0% during the 2008-2009 era? So it says here they're going to apologize at a July 17th U.S. Senate hearing for anti-money laundering controls that weren't effective enough, according to the internal memo obtained by Bloomberg News. Quote, we failed to spot and deal with the unacceptable behavior, said the chief executive officer. And it's kind of like uh, this bank that was money laundering. Drug cartel used Bank of America account to invest in U.S. race horses. Despite its strong efforts to counter money laundering, Bank of America allowed the largest drug cartel in Mexico to use its accounts to invest in U.S. horse racing. I wonder if those new clone horses that they're coming out with. U.S. broker PFG Best founder attempts suicide as $200 million go missing from accounts. It says here that Russell Wazendorf Sr. is in critical condition in hospital after regulatory issues. Emergency order to freeze broker's operation. The apparent suicide attempt came hours before the National Futures Association uh, put out an emergency order to basically freeze their assets, freeze their um operations. U.S. bank director disappears with $17 million of investors' money after appending a rambling confession to financial regulators and writing notes to his family. A South Georgia bank director boarded a ferry in Florida and disappeared. So this is the interesting thing, right? Um, you'll find some stories on Raw Story that aren't always uh, kosher, as you, could, as you could say. And this one is it. It says, NSA chief hackers causing the greatest transfer of wealth in history. Well, by golly, I could have sworn it was the asshole banks that were stealing and transferring the wealth, biggest wealth in history. No, it's hackers. Hmm. And not just hackers. Oh, Occupy Wall Street protesters are stealing the wealth in hi of all the wealth in the history. Computer hackers are on the bleeding edge of the class war, and they're finally cutting deep enough that the leader of the NSA is making an active push for some major congressional action. Says that's why the uh, senior chief of the NSA told conservative-leaning American Enterprise Institute on Monday that the costs associated with responding to computer hacking represents the greatest transfer of wealth in history. But it's really all about politics, right? His talk was meant to support a passage of a bill to firm up the nation's cyber defenses. Then we have Nova Scotia open for what kind of business in 1993, 
The progressive conservative government of Donald Cameron introduced new commercial license plates to provide that state in red letters, Nova Scotia open for business. It says it may be time for the NDP government to revisit that message. After last week, the National Resources Minister made a clear choice about the kind of business Nova Scotia really supports. Rather than defend the rights and interests of Nova Scotian family businesses, he sided instead with the DD. Uh, v Gold, a subsidiary of Australian company Atlantic Gold, granting the mining company vesting orders and thus ownership of 14 parcels of land in the Moose River gold mines. So some of that belongs, or rather belonged, to the Higgins family that refused to sell any land, pointing out that they had run a successful and sustainable business, providing five full-time jobs and 25 seasonal ones, producing Christmas trees on that land that had been in the family for generations. And then in Pennsylvania, Scranton, Pennsylvania, the mayor slashes pay for all city workers, including police and firefighters, to minimum wage. So it says here, Cash Strap, Pennsylvania, Scranton, the city of Scranton, has slashed pay for all city employees, including police and firefighters, to minimum wage, sparking fear among unions that now say the, they plan to sue in federal court. So that they basically did this, saying it was the only way to keep Scranton solvent. I guess they could end up like San Bernardino, who voted to file for bankruptcy protection. That's right, they voted to file for bankruptcy, um, basically facing a $45 million budget shortfall and the prospect of not being able to pay city workers. So, This past week, in a little notice announcement, the new head of the World Bank floated a trial balloon proposing that the World Bank advised troubled nations like Greece. So the question is, is the World Bank seeking a role as a global tax collector? And this is based off of a statement, uh, basically the World Bank's new chief, Jim Yong uh, Kim. And the Reuters article calls this a major shift for an institution that is focused on the world's poorest. And now, and uh, this guy, this, uh, Kim, he said, the bank could also deploy its technical know-how to help richer nations with structural problems. That's that's. That's countries like us who have been load, uh, looted by the bankers. And the structural problems is not having any cre credito anymore, right? No credito. And so they just want to give you more credit and uh, more loans to fix the problem. And then the chair of the British Parliament's Energy and Climate Change Committee has called for the launch of a pilot personal carbon allowance trading scheme, which could be based on his own constituency and funded by the private sector and possibly the EU. So he's calling for a personal carbon trading scheme. So it's, I don't think it's just like a regular flat carbon tax. This is like a cap and trade. So it says here, citizens whose emissions fall beneath uh, an agreed uh, cap would receive a rebate while those living more carbon, sorry, carbon profligate lifestyles would have to pay to offset their emissions. So, and that's why they call it a scheme because it's like one word uh, before a scam. So it's this big scam. Family slugged with carbon tax fee for a funeral. A Melbourne Australian family who claimed they were slugged by an extra $55 carbon tax charge when burying a relative were told even the dead don't escape the carbon tax. I remember in Australia you can't even talk bad about the carbon tax and like for restaurants they could actually get fined a lot of money. I think it's almost like millions we're talking bad about the carbon tax. Alberta and Canada hit by rolling power blackouts. Great concern grid would go down. Oh, sorry, I just had to close my door there. It's kind of funny. My neighbor's like uh, cutting their grass and there's no grass to cut. You know what I mean? The, the, all the grass is just parched. It's totally like hay. You know what I mean? There's nothing to cut. It's been like this for three weeks, but they're going to go out there and do it because I think she's obsessive compulsive. I remember seeing her blowing leaves around when the winds were about 40 miles an hour and they were just blowing right back where she did it so i tell you man the sheeple <laughs> yeah so uh yeah so talking about rolling blackouts due to heavy demand right and uh and i saw this other article and i started to think about some this forced blackouts may occur over a week of heat wave as temperatures surge during the next week it says here the iec said it expects electricity demand to be extremely high they're talking about the Israeli Electric Corporation. And then if you go to the east coast of the United States, we had that big blackout, right? But they blamed it on the storms. And I'm almost wondering if they did that because it just started to kind of cool down a little bit these last couple days. But prior to that, I mean, it's still been pretty dang hot, especially with that heat wave. I'm wondering if the whole east coast, if they just shut down the grid and then they blamed it on the storms. I mean, they could whip up a storm lickety split. We all know that due to weather modification. I don't know, I guess it's just something to pay attention to in the future. Alaska candidate kicked off, of course you have the 
the Enron scam too, right? Which is they just pur purposely do it. Uh, they purposely do it so they could uh, raise prices. Alaska candidate kicked off ballot for being homeless. So we know Dennis Kucinich, his history, I guess, and his history uh, before becoming a candidate and there in Ohio of living in his car. And he actually represents his people. So see, she's dangerous because she might actually represent uh, people in Anchorage. That's the problem. So it says here she's an Army veteran and has a, a career experience in real estate. Um, and she wants to run for Congress. But it says here she her greater sin is because 10 months ago she's been living in a camper shell in the back of her truck. That means she doesn't technically meet the 12-month residency requirement to run, the Division of uh, Elections says. Then we have bringing back the 40-hour work week. And it says here, while it looks good to be the first to arrive and the last to leave at work each day, it turns out that putting in 60 hours of work each week may do more harm than good in achieving end results. Let me check this out. It says here, three in four Amer uh, members of the American workforce put in more than 40 hours per week, even though 55% of people are dissatisfied with their jobs. One in three professionals work more than 50 hours a week. It says here, look at this, 1960, eight out of 10 American children had just one working parent, whereas in 2012, only three in 10 children have a stay-at-home parent. I think there's big significance to that in the divorce rate and many other social problems, but that's just my own personal opinion. It says here, we're working more, but we're making less. Look at this, adjusted for inflation, 1970, they're making 59,000 average income, and in 2012, 51,000, so 8,000 less. And in 1970, they work in 35 hours average per week. Now it's 46 hours average per week. Interesting little tidbit too, it says here, six of the top 10 competitive economies it says here, prohibit employees from working over 48 hours a week. The United States is a 46-hour work week. Denmark and Sweden is 31. Germany, Norway, and the Netherlands is 27 hours. So it's not surprising that in the ranking the world's happiest, Denmark, Norway, and the Netherlands made all the top five. You have over 1 million workers calling in sick to work every day due to stress. Three and four Americans uh, feel stressed at work, and one in four say it's the most stressful thing in their lives. And they actually equated this number, workplace stress cost U.S. employers about $200 billion per year in lost pr productivity. And it says here, people working more than 11 hours a day are two and a half times more likely to be depressed than those working eight. And at the end of the business day, uh, basically businesses don't benefit from overtime work. Then we can check out some scenes of despair in the United States foreclosing on an elderly woman with stage 4 breast cancer. That's Wells Fargo threatening to evict an elderly woman with stage 4 breast cancer from her, uh, her family home in North Carolina. Then there's other things such as the crushing poverty in Greece, which we've covered before. So you have the economic suicides, right? Um, you also have the rise of the Nazis in Greece. American families are living in their cars. And talking about the drought, uh, desperately hoping for rain, yesterday they wrote about how corn crops are dying all, all over the United States. This will mean higher prices at the grocery store. And the article finishes up, finishes up by saying, instead of looking down on homeless and the unemployed, don't be afraid to give them a helping hand. This is from the 6th uh, of July. Fracking causes rumbles, an earthquake in California. Fracking forces eviction of entire Pennsylvania trailer park. And so when they move, they're going to basically end up having to pay about a $325 or more a month in rent. So basically the residents were left out in the dark. They were never told about it. Uh, and basically on June 12th, it says residents were told by this new company that forced evic evictions would begin the next day and anyone who refused to leave would be subject to arrest. Last month, both police and private security forced uh, raided a protest waged by anti-fracking activists. Democ Democracy Now! reports. And then remember this, frackers use PSYOPs to deal with Pennsylvania insurgency. Natural gas fracking companies are treating the campaign to expand drilling in Pennsylvania like a military campaign using PSYOPs to quell the insurgency of environmental concerns. Talking about activists. Seattle SWAT team raids homes of Occupy uh, activists as part of an investigation to allege anarchist action. And look at this, official DNA ties 04 New York City death to an Occupy protest. Hmm. You like that? How you guys are being, hum now you guys are hackers and killers, anarchists. So passengers could be asked to give drink samples to the TSA. They don't know why they're testing. Well, they want to get your DNA. Someone mentioned that. It's a pretty good idea. New Homeland Security laser scanner reads people. It detects everything about you from over 160 feet away. 
even adrenaline levels. Waste management garbage drivers are going to be keeping an eye out. Oh, anarchists, terrorists, and plain old thieves and creeps. Kind of like the terrorism liaison officers are training utility workers to spy. Hmm. This is GGN. Thank you.